We only have 66 books in the Bible and 73 references to gratitude and thankfulness. So obviously, it's a very important uh, thing that, that we, we do. So I want to talk with you today about when Jesus gave thanks. When Jesus gave thanks. Uh, you know, you might say, well, uh, th that's going to cover a, a lot of material. Well, maybe not as much as, as you would think. Now, you know, we know that all of the prayers of Jesus are not recorded in Scripture. All of his thanksgivings are not recorded. Uh, what is it that John says in the very last verse of his gospel about uh, what, ha what was recorded and what was not? Uh, in John chapter 21, verse, whatever that last verse is, verse 25. Yes. Uh, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. That was, that was John's uh, summation. So the Gospels obviously do not give all of the times that Jesus gave thanks uh, because there were, there were other times. But there are actually six specific times that the word uh, Jesus gave thanks uh, six six times and so I'd, I'd like for us to uh, look at those uh, here uh, today here at this 11 o'clock prayer meeting uh, service at, at Dalewood on this Tuesday rather than twi uh, Wednesday first one is in Matthew 15 verses 35 36 and 37 Matthew 15 35 through 37 and it's the uh, instance of course where uh, Jesus is feeding the 4,000 and uh, it's uh, well let's just read that Matthew 15 verses 30 <coughs> let's start with verse 35 so Jesus commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks and broke them and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitude so they all ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. So that's uh, the instance where Jesus fed the 4,000. You know, well, there were two of these. And the, the second one is found in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 11. Uh, by the way, this same feeding of the 4,000 is found in, in Mark's Gospel, too. But John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 11, and... You, you all know this story, maybe even a little bit better, because it involves the little boy's lunch that he had, uh, that he had uh, brought. And uh, verse 11, it says, Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Uh, so two, two times that Jesus gave thanks <coughs> for uh, the hungry folks who were going to be uh, fed. First time, uh, the 4,000 here in Matthew 15. Second time, 5,000 in uh, John chapter 6. Uh, we, we don't know the full source of the loaves and fishes that fed the, the 4,000. Uh, the disciples said, here, here are, this is all we've got, but what would that do? And uh, Jesus took the loaves and fishes and, and, fed, and fed the, the 4,000 multitude. And then John chapter uh, 6 with the five loaves and the two fish. What was the source of that? You remember? Little boy's lunch, right? Uh, his mom had packed his lunch that day. He heard he was going to go out uh, among the many people and hear the master teach and preach. And so he offered his lunch. I've, I've thought a lot of times about fives and twos. Uh, we have a lot of fives and twos, we, we human beings. We've got five senses, and, uh, and we've got uh, two eyes and two ears and two lips and uh, two hands and two feet and got five fingers on our hands and five toes on our feet and so forth. So a lot of fives and twos. And, uh, you know, I think what that says to us is, just like the little boy brought his fives and twos, we, we bring ours. And what did the Apostle Paul say? Brothers, present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh, uh, totally you know, committed to the Lord. So we say, Lord, here, here's this bodies. Some, some of our bodies are growing older. Some of them have uh, 
frailties and, and uh, sicknesses and so forth. But all, all of that we present uh, to the Lord. So, uh, so these, these two stories of Jesus giving uh, thanks, uh, I think that these two, he's giving thanks that he will be able to feed the hungry masses. These are people who, uh, some of them had been listening to him a long time and Jesus was concerned uh, for them. So, so he gave thanks when facing a hungry crowd, when feeding and facing a, a hun hungry crowd. Uh, so how does that apply to us? Well, you, you're not going to be uh, facing and feeding a hungry crowd anytime soon, are you? Well, maybe uh, day after tomorrow, <laughs> that uh, cr cr crowd that uh, gathers at your at your place, or that crowd that gathers wherever you might uh, you might be, you might be uh, having a, a part in that. I'd, I'd be curious today. Are you going to be at home? <coughs> group? Let's see. What does that does that mean? We I don't I don't see anybody on my, on my screen. Do you think? Do you need to type in your password or? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are y'all all still there? We're here. Oh okay. All right. Okay. Good. Then it doesn't matter that I don't see that. Either. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, are you going to be gathering with? What are you going to be, Larry? What are you doing this this time at Thanksgiving? Will you be at home or will you and no, Steve? No, no. Not yet. They can wait. They can my, my brother will call me. Be with Steve. Uh huh. Yep. Good. Yep. I may, I may go over uh, with Ann's. Uh huh. Right. Good. You know, we meeting over there. Right. Reba, how about you? Will you have family in or will you be family with? Uh, I, I cook all the food, but we t I go to Mount Julia to my oh. sister's house. And okay. I always meet up there. Yep, so you'll be carrying a lot of food to feed the hungry then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> cook and travel, that's the short yeah. end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Emily, what will you? Uh, Kim has said she was going to cook and we'll be at her house, just the three of us. Okay. And not go out. Okay, good. How about Don? <clears throat> Usually my sister cooks, but since there's only three of us this year, we're going to Cracker Barrel. And going to eat some Cracker Barrel. That way we don't have all that leftovers and all that. It's just too much stuff. Yep. How about you, Jonathan? We were hosting this year. Uh -huh. Second time we've ever done that. Uh, it was we were hoping to get uh, Lindsay's family, and my family, and everybody. Uh, but Lindsay's family has had some different things come up. Doesn't sound like any of them will be able to make it. But we'll have my parents, and then my sister, her husband, and uh, my niece Lorelai, and of course Lindsay and Noah and me. Okay, so that'll be a total of uh, maybe uh, already six adults and two little ones. Okay, good. Happy Thanksgiving. How about y'all, Shirley? And Larry? We're going to Sandra and David Lewis. You know Sandra oh, sure. and Larry's sister. Yes. And uh, niece and nephews be here with their with their children. So we'll have great nieces and great nephews. And so you're going to gonna have a pretty, yeah. a pretty big hungry crowd then. How about on the phone? Uh, let's see, we've got, we've got Linda and Lindsay and, and uh, Robbie on the phone. Uh, Robbie, how about, what, what's your Thursday looking like? Okay, family in Henderson. <coughs> and uh, Linda? Uh, we're not doing anything Thursday. Okay. Linda and get together on Friday. Get together on Friday, next day, yeah. At, at, uh, at your place? Will they be coming into your home? I guess it'll be at Darlene's. At Darlene's, mm hmm Okay, and then uh, Lindsay, Jonathan has already kind of filled us in on, on you, so. Uh, yeah, so we know that. Uh, we, Jolene and I, uh, we'll, we're kind of doing our Thanksgiving a little bit later, so uh, at this particular point, we may go to Decatur. Our daughter Carol is there, and she gets with in-laws on Thanksgiving, so we may just go by. Uh, her father-in-law, Chris's dad, has had some health issues, so we might just drive over in the afternoon and visit with them a little bit and uh, just uh, have, have prayer with Don her father-in-law, but we'll, we'll just see about that part. We don't know that part yet. So, uh, so uh, we, we give thanks for a hungry crowd, so to speak, and the privilege. Of course, with Jesus, it was miraculous the way he took the fives and twos with the 5,000, the way he took the seven loaves and the fish with the 4,000, uh, because it wasn't just a miracle of feeding, folks. It was a miracle of what was left over. 
uh, and uh, I, I think oftentimes we don't think about leftovers. Nobody likes Thanksgiving leftovers too much. You know, you have the turkey soup and turkey stew and turkey this and that and the other uh, afterwards. Uh, but the, these two stories of uh, the miraculous feeding certainly reminds us that God is interested in hungry people. Uh, he's interested in feeding those who have need. Uh, and uh, Jesus gave thanks. So, so that's the first instance. Uh, second one is found in Luke chapter 10. That's the first two, actually, because that's the feeding of the 4,000 and the feeding of the 5,000. So this would be number three, Luke chapter 10, verse 21. And if you mark Luke chapter 10, verse 21, and it's uh, uh, another time that Jesus give thank, gives thanks, and it says, In that hour, do you remember Jesus sent out his disciples uh, and uh, actually 70 of them went out, 35 teams, and uh, they saw God do some powerful things. Uh, he, uh, <coughs> he healed people, released uh, demonic possession, uh, and, and, and so forth. And so they had come back and reported, and that's where verse 21 picks up. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father and who the Father is except the Son and the one to whom the Son will reveal him. And then Jesus turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes of which see the things that you see for for I tell you that mighty prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear have not heard it in other words the things that they saw the Holy Spirit do uh, through their uh, witness and through their uh, the miracle touches that they had with others uh, prophets of old and men of uh, uh, men and women of old had desired to see that, but now the kingdom is coming and Jesus is there. So he's he's giving thanks uh, in this case for the mysteries of the gospel uh, that had been hidden from the wise and revealed to babies. You know, aren't we all kind of babes in in, in Christ? So when the disciples return from sharing the gospel and from these miracles, uh, Jesus is giving thanks. So I think in this instance, we can say Jesus gave thanks for the hungry uh, multitudes being fed, and he gave thanks for the, the revelations of the gospel. Uh, you know, so much had been hidden. We've got the Bible, and so much uh, was concealed about the gospel in the Old Testament, and it's revealed in the, in the New Testament. Somebody said you can find Christ on every page in the Bible, just about. Some of those old... Uh, Testament passages, he's more concealed, and some of the new, he's more uh, revealed. Uh, but he has, he is. Y'all remember a song people used to sing in weddings? Ah, sweet mystery of life. At last, I found thee. Uh, somebody said you don't. They don't sing that anymore because most couples, by the time they get married, they've found out all the mysteries of life. They don't have uh, many of those mysteries left, un un unfortunately. Uh, I don't know that's the reason we don't sing that anymore. Maybe it's just an old song that's not used in, in weddings. But the mysteries of life that Jesus Christ revealed when he came, he's giving thanks for that. And that uh, is revealed to folks like you and me. That we have the privilege of uh, hearing the gospel and un understanding him uh, and, uh, and, and so forth. And uh, so uh, that, that actually goes on in the fourth time that Jesus gave thanks and that's in John 11 verse 38 so John's gospel chapter 11 verse 38 through 44 once again uh, here's a special moment in the life of Jesus uh, and it says and Jesus again groaning in himself verse 38 came to the tomb I'm going to stop right there that was the tomb of Lazarus his good friend and so Jesus is standing outside the grave of, of Lazarus. And the Bible says it was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time <coughs> there is a stench, for he's been dead four days. I mean, he's stinking, Lord. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, thank you that you have heard me. Here's his thank you. And that I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Heard people say through the years, he had to call out the name Lazarus because if he just said, come forth, all the dead in the graveyard right there would have come forth. So he called out Lazarus specifically. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. So this instance of Jesus giving uh, thanks is uh, for... Here, he's giving thanks to God the Father for hearing him and for revealing himself to others. He's, uh, he, he's in this situation. But, but where is Jesus when he's giving thanks? Outside the grave of a dear friend. And so I think about uh, if, if these two feedings were significant in that he's saying thank you for the privilege of feeding the hungry. Here Jesus is saying thank you for the privilege of of knowing that my loved one is going to be resurrected. You remember Martha came to him and, and uh, she said, Jesus, if, if you'd have been here on time, our brother wouldn't have died. And you remember Jesus' statement. It's one of the greatest statements in the Bible. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me will, will never die. Do you believe this? And then, you know, Martha said, Lord, I do believe that there was going to be a resurrection. Yes, I, I believe that. And Jesus is saying, no, we got some good news for you right now. This, this is going to happen. So uh, Jesus is thanking his father for hearing him and, and, and for revealing himself so that others uh, could believe. But I think it's significant. You know, uh, the Bible says that Jesus had groaned. Jesus wept at this occasion. Uh, why is Jesus mourning and weeping when he knows he's getting ready to raise Lazarus from the dead? Well, somebody said maybe that's why, bringing Lazarus back from already uh, beginning to experience that early, early moments, you know, of the resurrected uh, life. Or maybe Jesus is grief-stricken <coughs> because of the grief of his friends. And I really think that's more of the, the answer. You know, our, our Lord Jesus had compassion on his dear friends. Probably Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were three of the most intimate friends that Jesus made during his three and a half years here on earth. They're, they were very close and, and uh, dear friends. Somebody says, uh, you know, does, uh, the, does, does Jesus have a kind of a special friend? He does. And he had that uh, special friend uh, in Lazarus who had died and in his sisters. Why were Lazarus and Mary and Martha living in the same house, one brother and two sisters. I don't know. I've, I've used my imagination. Maybe Mary had uh, been a single person who had kind of been out wandering uh, like a prodigal girl. I, I don't know. Maybe Martha had stayed with the parents and was that uh, kind of single person that kept uh, seeing about them and they had died. Uh, maybe Lazarus had uh, gotten a job elsewhere and then came back home because he was ailing and sick and Martha was taking uh, care of him. The Bible doesn't say why three single adults uh, were living together, why this wasn't a mom, a dad, and, uh, and some little children around. Uh, but it reminds me that, uh, that Jesus uh, deals with all families, all kinds of situations, not just the nuclear family that's the ideal family. G Jesus deals with singles and couples without children and and families with children, uh, and, and and so forth, and uh, so here he is at the graveside, graveside of a dear dear friend, and what's he doing? He's giving thanks. So I'm saying to you, it's a good lesson uh, for us that even in the you know the tough times of our life, to give thanks that out of that God's going to reveal Himself. You know, a lot of times when I uh, sign a book uh, in the funeral home. 
I will put a, a verse of scripture with that. And the verse is one that, uh, that means a good deal to me. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, I, I, will, I will write that along with my name when I sign uh, the book because knowing that uh, people are experiencing uh, grief, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3, says this, Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our time, of, in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So, to me, one of the things we can give thanks for when we go through trials and tribulations is, Lord, this will help me to reach out to other people who are going through similar things, and I will be able to comfort them because of the comfort that you give me. So maybe that was a part of what Jesus was giving thanks for at the graveside of the friend. Lord, out of this, you're going to be honored and glorified, and out of this, people are going to uh, believe. All right, and there's one other time, actually two other times, uh, and, and both of these are in a similar passage. Luke chapter 22, <coughs> Jesus gives thanks. So in Luke 22, beginning with verse 14, Jesus gives thanks. And the Bible says, When the hour had come, Jesus sat down with his twelve apostles with him, and he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Okay, so this is at the time of the Passover meal. You say, at the Lord's Supper. Now that's coming, but this is just the Passover meal. The Bible says he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take and divide this among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Uh, Jesus is in the middle of the Passover meal. And the way he's taking the cup is what a host in a Passover meal would often do. And there were several different prayers that the Jewish people would pray and several different cups that they would uh, uh, present, so to speak, in, in uh, giving thanks to God. But the Bible says that Jesus interrupted the Passover meal there to give thanks. When he took the cup, he, give, he gave thanks. This is not the Lord's Supper yet. This is uh, the time that Jesus is giving thanks for the uh, Passover, and it is uh, the, uh, a cup of promise that uh, Jesus was looking forward to the kingdom to uh, come and the disciples to, uh, all of his followers to join together. So it's the, he's, he's giving thanks for the cup of promise. <coughs> so you and I have a lot of promises about the kingdom coming. And we can give uh, thanks for that. But then, then in verse 19 it says, Then he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So this is an another instance where the Bible says, And he gave thanks. In this case... I, I, it's, it's something that I always can, I always struggle with even being able to comprehend. He's thanking the Father for the passion that he is getting ready to endure, the, the suffering, the, the trial, the beating, the, uh, you know, all, all, all the crown of thorns, and then, of course, the cross itself. He's giving thanks for that. In the hour of his passion, uh, Jesus is praying and giving thanks. Of course, that uh, that passage is found in Matthew's gospel, Mark's gospel, and even in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24, the apostle Paul refers to that, uh, Jesus giving thanks uh, at, at what we call the Lord's Supper, uh, the, the communion service. So y'all hear all these instances of Jesus giving thanks. And by the way, there's one other one, and it does not say Jesus gave thanks. But it's very clear that he did, and we'll conclude with that. Luke 24, verse 30. It doesn't use those words that he's used in those other uh, six instances. But uh, you remember that it was resurrection day. Two of the disciples had been walking along talking about uh, Jesus' death on the cross and how grieved they were, and that they had heard that some of the disciples had seen him uh, living 
but they just couldn't quite comprehend it, couldn't quite, uh, you know, bring it uh, uh, into their minds that, that he had uh, uh, risen from the dead. And this person appeared uh, walking along with them. And, of course, it was the Lord Jesus risen from the dead. Their eyes were holding. They couldn't uh, recognize them. But in verse 30, it says that uh, uh, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they began to say to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened to them on the road and how he was made known to them in breaking of bread. Uh, I, I'm just thinking that even though the scriptures didn't use the word and he gave thanks, this is how they identified that it was the Lord Jesus through his thankful spirit and his giving thanks. How do people recognize you? How, how do they uh, say, man, I, you know, I, I'd know them anywhere. Well, I hope people will recognize me like they would the Lord Jesus by a grateful heart, a grateful spirit, that attitude of gratitude uh, no, no matter what. So those are the instances, as far as we know, that are recorded in the scripture when Jesus gave thanks. Like John said, probably there were hundreds of others. Uh, they're just not uh, recorded in, in the scripture. And so what do we do this week? We follow the example of Jesus. We give thanks. Amen? Amen. 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 So be it. Father, we give you thanks that we have the privilege, like Jesus, of coming before you, not just at the table, but even at the graveside. Not just at the graveside, but among other believers who've had revealed to them the mystery of the gospel. Not just at those times, but even in the times of, of, of uh, uncertainty, not knowing what the future holds, but believing all the things that you've said about the future. Lord, we give you thanks. And so today, accept our thanks for who you are and what you do, and may we come as your thankful people to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.